Joining us now for more perspective on all of this is News Nation's legal contributor, Jesse Weber, and Julie Blackman, a jury consultant who has worked on many high profile cases, including Martha Stewart's trial. Uh, thank you both for being here. Jesse, I just want to start with you. How often does this happen that two jurors are seated and then dismissed before the trial even starts? It happens, and let me tell you, I'm happy it happened now than during the course of the trial. That's why we talk about 12 jurors. The alternates are so important. Stuff happens during the course of a trial. And look, you have two unfortunate situations here. One, where apparently a juror was not honest, and B, kind of a wake-up call to the media, even though Judge Mershon said, you know, use your common sense here, reporters. Yeah. The lawyers need to know what the professions are of these individuals. They're allowed to know the physical description don't report it out. Use your common sense. And I'm glad it happened now in, what, the second day of jury selection? Then we're talking about the second week of trial. Yeah, Julie, the judge, Judge Marshawn, has taken pains to tell jurors they can remain anonymous. And yet, juror number two said within a day, people in her life figured out it was her because biographical information had been printed and aired about her in news coverage of this case. This is really important that these jurors feel safe in order to do their jobs. It is, and I think that we're, we're looking at a kind of nuanced form of anonymity. They're not truly anonymous. Their names are known to the defense and to the prosecution. They've been Googled using their names, so information about them is unearthed, making them more knowable. And really, for the very first time, we're seeing jurors um, questioned in court based in part on information that comes from the Internet. Right. To my knowledge, it's the first time that's ever happened. Yeah, we had a juror this afternoon questioned about posts on Twitter in 2016, eight years ago. Right. And imagine when people sit down at their, at their computers or on their handheld devices and type in messages, they're really not imagining that they're going to be seen in this context. All right, Jesse, the, the, the judge has now ordered that the news media take pains not to report anything about these prospective jurors that could give away their identity. Um, yeah, I guess, does that mean no basic descriptions of them, like 60-year-old white man, you know, retired hey, lawyer? They better be careful. And I'll tell you this much, you know why they're really going to do it? Because we don't have cameras in that courtroom. Right. And if you break that rule, you're going to get kicked out. Having a seat in that courtroom is a coveted spot. I remember when I was covering the Harvey Weinstein trial in that same courtroom, we were the eyes and the ears of the world for it. And that's what we have here. So they're going to make sure they do everything not to violate that order and be very careful with what the jurors do or what they say. And now that we've got 12 jurors, yep. one alternate seated so far, I don't even know if they're still at it because they were still at it when I came on the air. Maybe yep. they wrapped up for the day. Do you expect we will see opening arguments by Monday? It's a strong possibility. We'll see opening statements. So now they have to, what, get another five alternates seated by tomorrow, which is not an impossibility considering Trump's team has run out of preemptory challenges. Um, and so this could move very quickly because now it's just going to be up to Trump's team to strike jurors for cause, which is more difficult. Uh, we could see opening statements on Monday uh, preceded by jury instructions, and we're going to be starting this case. And opening statements are so vital. In for the like non-lawyers uh, in our audience, preemptory challenges or when yep. you get to kick somebody off for no reason at all. Right. For, for whatever reason you want. Right. You know, you don't have to give them for like cause. I don't like the feel of it. I feel yep. I'm getting some yep. vibes off yep. this person that yep. they're not going to be uh, good for my side. Julie, you wrote in an op-ed that even though Donald Trump is as high profile and polarizing a defendant as, can, as there is out there, that he can get a fair trial. There's been a lot of debate, and Trump himself is now charged with violating the gag order by speculating that some of these jurors are actually stealth jurors, people who are telling lies in order to get on the jury. Uh, do you think that's an issue in this case? I think it's a concern. I think that we always have a concern during jury selection that you know, not everyone will be entirely truthful. But as a whole, I say in that article that juries are, are better than the sums of their parts that even if one juror misrepresents, absent a decision to hang a jury, they're unlikely to do substantial harm. Now, of course, the decision to hang a jury is a very big decision yeah. and a very big thing. Yeah. Um, that said, um, it's possible in criminal cases, and it happened in the case of, of Robert Menendez, that if a jury reaches a supermajority verdict, they voted 10 to 2 for acquittal in that case, the case against him then was dropped. So it isn't necessarily the case that a hung jury means you start all over again. All right. Um, depending on the vote, things may proceed differently. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.